Hey, good afternoon. The Senate Government Operations Committee. It's Wednesday, April 7th. So we were going to move on to the discussion about the Agency of Public Safety. I'm willing to let Jeanette take the lead on that, obviously. I wonder, Gail, are the, other, are the folks here? I am admitting them right now. And I did post that document that you referred to earlier, Senator Polina, that's on our website now. And I just posted a link to it on chat. Uh, oh dear. If it's on chat, we can't pull it up. Cause you can't, I can't see people and do that. Well, you don't have to do it on chat. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's on it's on our website, right? Okay, got it. I can forward that to anyone who needs a copy. Well, if it's on our website, it's which was the document you just did? It's the letter from Mr. Sorrell. Oh, from Jacob Humbert. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> so and that was we sent start. On oh, I'm sorry, Gail. That was sent on Monday if anybody needs to check yeah. their email for it. So before we start, I guess I need to ask a procedural question here. Is since this is an S bill, we're gonna have to have permission to from the rules committee to bring it out. And I think they'll if we bring it out that they will give us that permission. But my question is, is this likely to end up being a committee bill? Does is everybody um, or should I just ask for it to be um, drafted in my name so that we can get going on it and have actually, um, so I, we make sure we don't lose the opportunity. I'm not ready to be a co-sponsor, so. Okay, then, <clears throat> Amran, I'm going to ask you if you will just put this in my name and send it to whoever needs to be sent to and Give it a number. <laughs> we'll do that. Okay, thanks. And then as we get farther along, we may all buy into it or not, but at least there it'll be in the works. It, it, yeah, that would be great. And it, it, it can evolve into a committee bill. Well, no, it, <laughs> oh, it will it, all. How it is introduced is not, is, is not always how it ends up, is it? Yes, yes okay. if it Sorry. is introduced okay. as S224, that's what it will always be. Right. It right. won't be a committee right. bill, but it may have the support of the committee, but it will not be a committee bill. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to, um, I was just, I woke up in the middle of the night last night thinking about this. Oh, what a, what a horrible. Life. It, huh? What a life. I know. What a dream life I had. But I have to tell you something very exciting before we start here. I had a real breakfast with a real person in a real place this Get morning. It, isn't that exciting? That That's is exciting. exciting. I, mean, had, I had I had um, home. I had coffee and um muffins with um, the sheriff on the porch of the general store. How wow. exciting. The first time since last fall. That's pretty, pretty good. good. That's really good. And I just felt like normal. It feels I know, weird I felt, to be normal, right? It, it felt weird to be normal, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I think the way what I like to do today is focus on the language that that came from because I think one of the real outstanding issues here is around um, the independence and autonomy of the council and and so what I'd like to do is start with the language that came from Mr. Humbert and Mr. Sorrell around that so <coughs> is the best way to do this Amron for you to walk us through that, those changes, those suggestions, or um, would you prefer having Mr. Sorrell do it? It might be hard to view those changes out 
outside of the context of the bill draft. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should, and it does, I believe, give um, some direction as to where in the bill draft those changes are. So okay, we do have a draft posted. Okay. So I suggest committee members pull that up um, and then we can <clears throat> view these changes one by one in the context of the draft. Okay. That I would suggest that. Okay, that is, um, since you've been working on this, that uh, that sounds reasonable to me. Does that sound reasonable to everybody else to do it that way? All right. Yes, this is okay, draft 1.3, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we go back and we pull up 1.3, great. Okay, so okay. we- Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, for the record, Amron Abergele, Office of Legislative Counsel. Uh, just as a preface for looking at this draft, the, as you may recall, the Department of Public Safety came in to this committee with a prior draft in a different format and did a walkthrough of that draft. I had taken that draft, uh, converted it into a more standard draft format, can, which can is what I you just, see now. Wait, mm -hmm. before you, you go, I yes. continue. I'm going to, Gail, I'm going out of the meeting on this device and going into it on another one. So I'm waiting in the waiting room here and I'm gonna leave on this one, okay? High tech. I know. Move. It's like a switch and bait. It's like whoosh. Ah. Okay. Uh, so this draft is a updated version of the draft that you saw from Commissioner Sherling. Um, it is shortened. I took out a lot of the references that are sort of technical changes, changing commissioner to secretary, um, department to agency throughout much of the statutes. And instead of doing an iterative uh I guess, act timeline where you see what the, the statute would look at at different stages of the transition. I The draft that you're looking at now would be the statutes as of the completion of the transition as of July 1st, 2022. And then in the effective date section, you'll see that we only add in the provisions um, according to when their effective date should be, if that makes sense. So uh, after completing that draft, I ran the draft both by the Department of Public Safety as well as uh, Mr. Sorrell in his office and Jacob Humbert, and they provided feedback. There was some discussion. And what we have here right now is language that people could tentatively agree was a good place to start, I would say is a good place of framing this. So. The feedback that you see here from Mr. Humbert is somewhat incorporated into the draft you're going to see now. I will point out where it's incorporated and where it has not been incorporated. So to begin, we're going to scroll down to section two, which begins on page two, and then scroll down to section 6002. <clears throat> and you'll see that this is the comment was around um, 3 VSA 6003 uh, to preserve the Criminal Justice Council independence. Chief Sorrell proposes that the text read that the agency would, and then you'll see that there's uh, a line here. So I'm scrolling down to subsection C. I'm sorry, this is on section 6003. I was going to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got too many screens going here. Okay. Um, so 6003, section C on line 17. Yes. So this change that was requested by Chair Sorrell has been incorporated into this language. Mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> and Madam Chair, would you like me to stop with each requested change for background and discussion, or would you like me to go through each of the requested changes and then? I think unless somebody has questions about them, let's go through the changes and then have a discussion of them because I've, I've already found a number of places here where I would change language, but it's not substantive changes, just language. Okay. I, I have concern. I already have a concern, but I can wait until we're done. Is I don't it a think technical it's question for Amarin. Not or a is it a question. Yeah. So I can wait. Okay. All right. So the next um, provision, let's see, is on page five, again under section 6003. Um, the, you'll see at the top of page six, the secretary may exercise administrative powers and functions relating to, and then there's a placeholder here. There was some, um, I would say, discussion between Commissioner Sherling and Chair Sorrell about what would be the appropriate language here. Um, I didn't see an easy place to put in compromising language or language that everyone was comfortable with. So we have a placeholder here because I know this might be come with more discussion about where the parameters are around what's administrative and what is not administrative. Mm -hmm. So that change has not been incorporated. <clears throat> okay. Moving down to sections 6054 subsection C. I'm going to find that 6054. not All right i think it might be on page 10. thank you i was trying to do a word find and it was not working it's on, on 16 on page 10. yeah six zero five four. okay thank you um c okay and so the this was re with regard to subsection c on page 11. um the comment from chair sorrell the Criminal Justice Council wishes to retain the authority to appoint the executive director. Um, and I did incorporate this change, as you will see in mm -hmm. subsection C1. The Vermont Criminal Justice Council shall appoint the executive director. And then in two, the executive director shall not be under the direction and control of the appointing authority, except to the extent permitted pursuant to subsection 6003C of this chapter. And this uh, subdivision two that I just read is with regard to the next comment. Um, the requested change was that Chair Sorrell further requests that this subsection C2 uh, reference the executive director for consistency. And again, as the administrative reference could be subject to various interpretations, cross reference to 6003C. Um, and so I did put in that cross reference. And that, again, cross-references up to what I read before, where there's just a placeholder for outlining what is the difference between an administrative function and power and what is not administrative. Um, the next comment was on section 6054B. This, I think, was really a, a wording um, I'm trying to describe the comment. Um, I agreed that the way I had drafted it was perhaps confusing. So I did uh, ch make change the draft to be consistent with the request there. Okay, so moving down to comment number four. This looks like it doesn't have a reference. This must be the transition section. Looking at section three on page 13, uh, Chair Sorrell's position is that the Vermont Criminal Justice Council financial assets and liabilities, as well as its positions, equipment, supplies, and inventory should remain the criminal justice's own. Further, the rules should remain 
uh, criminal justice council rules, meaning that the Vermont Criminal Justice Council would retain its rulemaking authority. I did not uh, incorporate th those changes. There was some, um, there was not agreement between Commissioner Sherling and Chair Sorrell about whether this was standard language um, or whether this was an area where the Criminal Justice Council's authority was being somehow moved or modified and giving the secretary more authority over the Criminal Justice Council. Comment number five, which is the general transition provision, which is down on page 15, section six. <clears throat> Uh, Chair Sorrell wishes to express concerns that this transition section could undermine the council's independence. Um, it sounded like there was specifically around the language um, authorizing directing the agency secretary to take any action necessary to enable the organizational modernization and consolidation of state law enforcement divisions and resources. This uh, was again an area where the interested stakeholders did not agree on whether this was language that was providing uh, more authority to the Secretary of Administration and diminishing the authority of the council. So I left it as is for further discussion in committee. Moving on to comment number six, with regard to section 2355. Two, three, five, five. Yep. Page 16, section seven, um, with regard to subsection C1, uh, the council shall, ah, this will not match what you see here because I did revise as requested to leave the language as it was, which says the council shall appoint subject to the approval of the governor, the executive director. And then lastly, comment seven, also in section 2355, but subsection C2B, <clears throat> the previous version said with the approval of the secretary in consultation with the council, uh, Chair Sorrell um, said that the Criminal Justice Council wishes to retain its current independence to employ staff and contract for services without the approval of the secretary um, and requested that this the language currently in statute remain. And I have done so and removed the modifications to leave the, um, the statute as it is currently written in that section. That's C2B. And those are the changes that I made in response to these. I apologize, but that was not the, the cleanest walkthrough of those sections. Um, there was an interim draft that the committee did not see, which these well, comments were in response to. That's that's okay. I'm <clears throat> I'm going to, if um <clears throat> Anthony, I'm going to um run down right now and I just printed this out. I'm gonna run downstairs and pick up what I just printed. So if you would just um, <clears throat> entertain, if anybody has drafting questions for sure. Amarin. Sure. Does anybody have questions for Amarin? So these are all the questions that were written. I don't know if questions the right word, but these all came off that memo that was sent to you. Amarin the other day that we saw that was multi-page at memo. You basically dealt with all of those things. The all of the those items that were listed in what's posted for today. Right. Yes. That's what those are. Um, I don't know if it would be helpful. It's been a while since we got the walkthrough from Commissioner Sherling of the bill. Would it be helpful if I did a refresher on what the bill as a whole does and the timeline? Well, Senator Rahm. I, I mean, <clears throat> I have a question, I think, for, for Bill. Um, 
about this language, but I don't know if that's appropriate now or people want to do a walk through the bill again first. I think it's, it would be appropriate now. We're talking about the language in the bill, I take it. Yeah, and this these changes. Sure. I, I mean, I, I guess I'm, first of all, I'm wondering, Bill, you know, even if you're doing an in, independent investigation into use of force, do you see any problems with having this larger agency in your independence with having this larger agency um, provide the administrative and operational support to you in conducting that independent investigation? Hey, can I, can I just before I'm sorry, I was going to interrupt before you start, because part of my question is, is that the case? I mean, that's what that's what we're seeing. And that's what the language appears to say, correct, Senator Rahm? Right, even if it says instead of it, it, previously, it looks like the, it said the agency, part of the agency's role is to conduct these investigations. I appreciate the clarification that's presented here, which is that the independent investigation would still be separate from the agency in the hands of the CJC. But I still am curious if, if the CJC could truly conduct an independent investigation in all contexts, if they are getting their administrative and operational support for that ind independent investigation from the agency. Bill, Bill, do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, I'll try. But first, I, I'm a, at a bit of a disadvantage because I either don't know or don't have the technology to be seeing the the language of the drafts that you're seeing. So I've written some notes down, but uh, I'm flying blind a little bit here uh, and would feel much more comfortable if I had a second screen that had the draft on it that I could, uh, I could see. So with that qualifier that I'm uh, a little bit uh, disarmed, I guess, uh, uh, in response to Senator Rahm's question, uh, um, it, I, I hate to play lawyer, but it depends on what you mean by administrative uh, support. And the, the I'm other. trying to figure out what that means as well, which is why I'm uncomfortable with the language at this point and, and essentially uncomfortable with the CJC being under the, in, a new agency. I, I guess my overarching question is, is there a way to be independent and be part of the agency? Uh, the, uh, if when, when we say administrative support, uh, what we're talking about, for example, is the assistance in uh, drafting uh, contracts. Uh, IT services, uh, things of, of uh, grant applications and grant uh, for received grants, grant administration. Uh, that's what we construe to be administrative where it doesn't, the, the agency doesn't have authority to, uh, uh, to to engage in the substantive work of the council. That's where what's fundamentally important to us in terms of uh, independence. And so uh, what we were trying to suggest is as long as the independence uh, language is clearly defined and the and through legislative history what you as the legislature means by the the language then we would be content that we wouldn't be under the thumb of an agency of public safety for our substantive work on uh investigations on uh creation of policies on, you know, body-worn cameras, uh, access to military equipment, uh, 
uh, facial recognition software, the uh, the entrance exam, any of the uh, issues re relating to the curriculum uh, uh, at at the uh, at the count. Excuse me, at the uh, the training council. Uh, uh, then, you know, or at the police academy, excuse me, uh, we don't see that the agency just by assisting us with administrative details would be in a position to uh, negatively impact our independence uh, for the duties that were given under S-124. Uh, we see that there is a hybrid situation, but we, as executive uh, interim executive director Sheets has testified, and I've testified, we've agreed that there would be some benefits to the council and the operation of the academy if certain of the administrative duties were uh, afforded uh, by uh, the agency of an agency of public safety. The, the independence, for example, is uh, that we want to be free to go in and testify before the legislature, just as we've done multiple times this session in both the House and Senate GovOps committees and in the appropriations committees about in response to the governor's recommend. We don't want to be uh, uh, run the risk of getting an angry call from someone in the cabinet saying you may uh, you may not do this or that. I mean, we won't live, we won't be able to function independently if, and we would lose credibility, I think, with what the legislatures tried to do by the creation of the council if if we were restricted in 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 that way. So uh, we, I trust the uh, Bill Sheets, Cindy Taylor Patch and others who see some advantages for in certain respects, uh, being under an agency umbrella, uh, but, as, but not as long as the substantive work of the council is negatively impacted. So, uh, Senator Polina. Yeah, I was just going to finish that thought. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, Bill. On the other hand, I, when I thought when I thought administrative actions, I was thinking of making copies and stuff like that, because you could argue that designing contracts and working on grant proposals could really raise red flags, because you could, by designing a grant proposal, it shapes part of what your activities are going to be. So I, I'm just I'm not I'm not saying it's car that I'm being argumentative at this point. I'm just saying that it raises those kinds of questions. Well, good point, Senator, because uh, I'm not thinking by saying being of assistance in uh, writing a grant proposal that the uh, secretary of the agency, an agency of public safety, would be in a position to say, no, you can't apply right. for that grant, or you can't say this as a reason supporting uh the 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 reason for the grant that i don't see as administrative administrative i see is typing the proposal or uh, right. figuring out maybe what software we might need to enhance our computer system but in terms of uh, uh what grants to apply for and what to say in support of receipt of such a grant i if if your concern if your concern that an agency of public safety could could negatively impact that then that would not in my view be an administrative uh, service that would be a decision making service on in the part of, on the part of the secretary of public safety and i would strongly object to that so I think you and I are on the same page here. I I think on this, and I hope I'm not being, uh, uh, you know, giving away too much. Uh, okay. I, 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 I think that um, 
when you talked about grants, I was thinking of grant administration, the real the real administrative part of a grant. And the example I'm thinking of is the town of Brattleboro, for example, has um, a grant administrative unit, a grants manager. The library decides what grants they're going to apply for and does all the the content work. The grants manager can help them write the grant actually to get it in the form that they need it. And then they can do the um, grant administration, the, the reporting and the keeping of all the numbers and that kind of stuff. But the library actually decides what grants they're going to apply for. The grants manager has no say in that whatsoever. So that's what I was thinking of when you said grants administration. You're really talking about a grants management position. Yes. Not, it, not the, yeah. Yeah, it's just that we wanna, if we get a grant and, and we wanna make sure that we dot our I's and cross right. T's so that we are not violating any of the uh, rules and regulations relating to use of grant funds and, and such. Uh, uh, it's, uh, but it wouldn't be that, so I think I'm agreeing with what you're saying is just, you know, not the, the agency wouldn't be in a position to say, no, you may not do that or whatever. It's, you've got to, you've got to do it in this way, as opposed mm -hmm. to the substantive issue of whether you can do the action or not. Right. I mean, grant kind of administration is, is complicated. And if there is a grant administrator or grant manager in the agency, then you should be taking advantage of it because some yeah, I mean, because yeah. I mean, the, 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 the police academy uh, staff, I mean, it's a small, it's a small yeah. staff. And uh, so uh, some of the uh, sort of duties that don't affect making decisions uh you know to be done within an agency construct would be take take some of the some of the burden off the uh the academy staff so can i ask a question about does on page five of the uh does the way it's defined shall retain and exercise all powers and functions given to the council by law, including the power to develop training and training delivery methodology, administer professional standards, conduct investigations and hearings, adjudicate law enforcement co officer conduct and issue and enforce orders. Is, does that cover, is that specific enough to, um, and, and then just um, the secretary may exercise administrative powers and functions, and I would not use the word powers, but just um, change that language a little bit. Does that, does that address it well I, enough or not? I think when you were away from switching screens or whatever, oh. Senator, I said that I was a little bit of a disadvantage and that I am not, I don't have the technology to be able to see the exact draft language. What you just read, uh, sounds about right to me. Uh, I would feel a lot more comfortable if I had the draft language in front of me, but I don't, uh, either I'm not skilled enough technologically or I don't, I don't have access to what you have right now. Do you, can you go to our webpage uh, without losing your... I, I don't think so. Okay, all right. <laughs> Well, I couldn't before. I, either, I apologize I for this. Uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, someone more te technologically uh, uh, versed than I could tell me how to do it, but uh, I, I I don't have it. I don't have okay. it to take a look at. Bill, I can't. I can't do it either. I have to have another device to do it. So, <laughs> okay, you, Madam yeah. Chair. Yeah. So, to me, I mean, this is just as I'm listening to this. It's. It's sort of like the council is in a co-working space with the agency. It, it, it shares administrative functions, which a co-working space does. We're all familiar with that model. And yet it's an independent, it has its own authority. It has its, its clear on its boundaries. 
uh, and is is clear on its own authority and will act and continue to act in those capacities, but that the it will take advantage of of, of shared costs and uh, burdens with as you would in a co working space. Is that sort of a fair way to look at it? I mean, I can envision it in this capacity. That is consistent with with how I see it working. That. Uh, 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 yeah, that that's a good analogy, I think. But I mean, the the council could be investigating someone in their co-working space. I feel like oh, that yeah. changes things okay. a lot. But but um, I okay. I I think I, that's the case. But I, I they I, may they might be. That doesn't bother me. I mean, they yeah. That, it doesn't mean they couldn't do it. I I don't see that that would be. A, a, a problem uh, necessary. I mean, I think we have to give some, some, um, uh, e either we don't, either we let the whole academy and the council be completely separate from the agency, or we allow them to pr get some benefit out of the fact that they can get su administrative support. And if we don't, if we, don't put them someplace else, then we're going to have to provide them more resources for for their administrative support. I mean, one of the things that I had wondered about when we looked at where to place the academy was should it be at someplace like BTC? Um, but that wasn't that wasn't an option. But that would have been that would have put it under the auspices of an educational institution, but they still wouldn't have been completely separate, I guess. I I don't see an issue with, I would change on page six, the on the top where it says the secretary will exercise administrative power and functions relating to, and then Amron put in that placeholder. I would change that language to the Secretary will provide administrative support and functions. Period. Instead of saying po administrative power, which makes it sound so you're just providing administrative support. Right, and that I think that would clarify that that co-working aspect of it and any power and authority the Criminal Justice Council has retains. And it, 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 we're not talking about power; we're talking about administrative functions sharing, which I think is good. Uh, we could also put in and we could review how this is working. I mean, although anybody can raise their hand at any point and say, this isn't working for us. And we do feel too much pressure to not do something or we, I mean, we could put in a review and see how it's working in three years. I also would add develop policies under their ability, under the council's um, powers, develop policies. Mm -hmm make it very clear. I think the question is, does, does this create a perception issue with the council that's supposed to be conducting independent investigation? Is there a perception that there is, that this is no longer independent? Um, and that causes a lot of problems for how we, what, why, why it matters to actually have independent investigation. I would much rather, I, I, what I feel like is happening is the language says, you know, the, the council, I think we should start with the council is completely independent mm -hmm. and only receives such and such very limited scope of services. But I think we need to really spell out the independence first and not just sort of consider that uh, an unspoken reality. I think that independence right. is the critical centerpiece of this. Yes, it, it, turn it on its head in a way and start with it, it being an independent body that is housed and, and, and shares administrative functions with the agency. In fact, in, men, in some ways it should have authority over the agency in certain ways as it conducts investigations. It should not be, it's not administrative support, it's the ability to access the resources and the personnel support it needs to conduct an independent investigation. 
I very much like affirmative statements that are clear. Uh, and I think the idea of starting with that premise of independence uh, makes a stronger statement than, than otherwise uh, treating it as an exception, if you will. Right, carving out something, but yeah, yes. I, I, I see that the mm -hmm. commissioner has turned his camera on. Does that mean he's wanting to say something? Uh, I turned it on um, just oh. because, uh, but I, I, I would uh, observe, I, I, I like the approach of uh, declaring independence uh, to use uh, old terminology and working from there to make it clear what the intent is. Um, uh, I would, I, I just want to also flag that uh, we keep talking about oversight over the, the agency of public safety. It's really oversight over the, what would be the um, department of law enforcement. The agency of public safety is a much larger construct. Um, and that is, in part why we thought that uh, bringing the operations of the academy and administrative support uh, to the Criminal Justice Council um, does make sense and does create the requisite distance um, from uh, law enforcement operations because the agency is much more than uh, a law enforcement organization. It has a component or would have components of law enforcement in it but is designed to do much more than that. Um, uh, I would also just offer that uh, we often find ourselves in this rabbit hole of trying to create uh, sort of workflows that don't take into account the need to hire and recruit the right people. And what I mean by that is um, all kinds of bad things can happen if you appoint a secretary or a commissioner of public safety that is the wrong person. Um, the one of the important pieces here is to try to elevate uh, this work, all of this work, to include the operations of the academy uh, to a cabinet level, so that there is um, direct oversight by an elected governor, and that uh, there is, you know, there's a uh, there are um, a political small p uh, ramifications to doing the wrong things, making the wrong appointments. So. Uh, I just wanted to add a little context uh, to this. So I, I have a suggestion, and I don't know if this makes any sense to anybody, but instead of 60003 being talking about advisory capacity and talking about <clears throat> and then carving out an exemption for the, um, uh, the council, let's, what if we put in a separate section for the council itself. So we had 66003 was declaring the independence of the council and putting in there what is in C there that what, what they have authority over and then making it clear that the um, agency has uh, administrative support, can provide administrative support and then have the um, section on the other advisory boards as is in A and B. Uh, so then that, that's making that definitive statement. This, this is a different animal. This is not the same as those others. And making it very clear. If, if I may make one uh, other observation, Madam Chair, that, I, mm -hmm. that was in my notes and I neglected to mention, and I'd say this for awareness more than anything, one of the reasons that uh, this was put forth originally in the construct that it was, was unfortunately there have been historic instances, some in the not too distant past where um, personnel action within the academy has been necessary. And there have been significant challenges to a, a council that are not state employees, not embedded in uh, the system and often without the requisite uh, personnel management skills. Um, that is an exception right now with Chair Sorrell in the, in the chair. Um, but one of the reasons that we had this a, a little more closely bolted to uh, the operations of the agency was to obviate those prior uh, challenges. And we even faced those challenges recently with the, uh, the processes to hire uh, executive director. They require 
um, significant resources that don't exist uh, within the existing construct of the academy or the council. And to that end, uh, the Department of Public Safety provided significant administrative support to that process. Well, I, I see that clearly as administrative support. If you have an HR person that can help um, make sure you follow all the guidelines and everything for hiring processes and stuff, I, I clearly see that as administrative support. It, it gets a little more complicated when you have someone, uh, a state employee who's in trouble for something, which yeah. unfortunately has happened. And then there, the appointing authority is an amorphous council versus an, ind an actual appointing authority, which is an individual. Um, so I, again, I just flag that as a potential challenge. It's not a reason not to proceed in the way that you're contemplating, but it, it, it creates the possibility of, of issues down the road. Doesn't the executive director hire the people and the executive director of the academy, not of the council executive, the council hires the, the executive director, but the executive director hires the other personnel. And so they. Uh, not really the, no. the, the hierarchy, the two directors of administrative services and of the instruction, uh, th those really, uh, I mean, the executive director is key in that, but it's the, uh, uh, let's just say the council was very active in uh, the interviews and the hiring, the decision to hire the, the new uh, director of administrative services. And uh, I think we had some language there that, uh, uh, that makes, makes sure the underscoring the independence of the council in that, in that the secretary of public safety would not be right. making the decision of who should be in the hierarchy of the uh, academy. <clears throat> That's not uh, what we envision. Yeah, I would just offer what, what I was originally envisioning, and I'm not sure it was, um, it was as clear in prior drafts, was the, a partnership between the secretary and the council where the council retains oversight of things until or unless they need to hand something to the secretary, like a personnel action against an executive director, for example. Um, again, trying to do that with a council of you know, X number of people is a bit of a nightmare. Um, that's, that's why we have appointing authorities in state government. So you're not doing it by committee. Um, but again, it, you, you, there, you can do it that way. I'm just pointing out that uh, what the original concept was in terms of the shared uh, duties and uh, just offer that as an option. Yeah, so, so I see, I'm trying to think here in terms of the town of Brattleboro, the um, town manager is the person that hires the, the police chief, but there's a committee that um, does the interviewing and all that and recommends to the town manager who to hire. But the town manager actually hires the person. And so I, I guess I don't see what the issue is here. So somebody help me out. I, I don't see what the issue is here that the council would recommend, would do the interviewing, but the executive director actually does the ultimate offering of the job and signing the contracts and all that. Am I wrong about that? Somebody has to do that. I think you're yeah, right. I, I think it's where the where we draw the line between um, like the training staff, for example, the people that work for me, the council isn't typically involved in that right. level of the process. But I think more to the commissioner's point of who is involved with issues that occur at the level of executive director. Yeah. Well, I would think that if it was an issue of and with the executive director that the council 
would have to work with the with the secretary to figure that one out if it's the executive directors if it's the secretary that's being under investigation somehow governor's going to take care of that <laughs> Well, under this construct, Senator, the, the council would retain all of that authority, um, which again, it, it is one way to go, but um, just operationally, I don't wanna bring you too far in the weeds. Imagine there's an allegation of misconduct against an executive director that requires swift action. You've gotta call a meeting to present what's going on, take a vote to have a body take a, a personnel action. Um, that's a challenge. At the same time, to Senator Rahm's point, we're not trying to create something where the requisite oversight that the council has relative to uh, certification, uh, investigations, et cetera, is in any way circumvented. So it's trying to, we were trying to strike a balance. Um, this has gone you know, further in, a, in uh, the other direction from what we had uh, presented. And again, you can do it that way. I'm just pointing out the potential pitfalls. It's it's not. Yeah. I, we hope that those kinds of things don't happen. So again, we're talking about. Um, it, it's, this isn't something that's going to happen every other month. It's it, it's a rarity, and hopefully, we'd never have to deal with it. I I would think that if if you had an executive director that somehow went off the rails and you had to do something right away that was for cause that the the um. Uh, What's your title, Bill? I'm the chair of the chair, council. That the chair could immediately um, just relieve the person of their duties until until you could take action. I can't imagine that if if it was something that was so egregious against the executive director that the chair wouldn't just say you're suspended for right. the time being and yeah. and then and then take action. But um, right. I I agree with you. I. We wouldn't wait to get 24, the, a, a quorum of the council together in the middle of the night to, uh, to take that kind of action. And you must have a personnel committee that can, could address it without having the whole council. But I would, anyway. Just keep in mind, I, I, I'm not being argumentative. I just want to point this out. Um, the current chair has, as much gov state government experience as any person in Vermont. And that is not always going to be the case. Right, that is true. But there are legislators who have no experience and we're actually making legislation, so. <laughs> no, no, I just mean relative to an immediate decision versus someone who might defer yeah. to a council. It, it's, again, it's a rarity. And I just offer that as one example of why we, we proposed what we proposed previously. Okay, well, wh what did you think of the, my idea of putting a whole separate section in there that specifically addressed the, the council and its independence and its duties and the administrative support to make it clear, clearer and uh, positive instead of an exemption? I found this if that was directed at me, I am in favor of that, Senator. <laughs> Uh, it was directed at anybody who cares to weigh in. I like the idea. I would, I would really like to see it say something about none of this support shall in any way delay or in or circumvent or you know get in the way of an independent investigation. Well, it isn't just an investigation. I think that we need to be clear that we're not talking about just investigations here. We're talking about policies, training curriculum. We're talking about all of that. So I, I would hate to focus in just on investigations because that's only one role of the council. And we wanna maintain the council's independence in terms of curriculum and policy development and um, the training delivery methodology, all of that. So I, I, I think that we make it clear that the administrative support does not interfere with the core functions of the, of the council, which is those things that are outlined here, including 
investigations and hearings and adjudication of law enforcement officers. That's fine yeah. with me. And, yeah, I, I think it would be great to have it separate, although the, the language is pretty clear that the following units uh, on page, whatever it is, page four, uh, it does say the following units are attached to the agency for administrative support, uh, you know, only. I mean, it doesn't say for anything else, but I think it would be clearer if the council had its own, uh, it, it, its own section because the others, uh, I, I believe, Commissioner, the others will be viewed as divisions of the agency, right? Well, uh, that's correct. Com component. Uh, some of them are components within divisions, but uh, but right. yes. I, I think of them as being divisions, like the division of fire safety or fire service training, or the. Um, so I, yeah. I, I think, in a way, it would be clearer to have a separate section on the. Well, yeah. If I can back up a minute, I did not mean to take it out of the of six of six zero zero two. I didn't mean to take it out of there at all because that clearly says these are attached for administrative support. What I meant is to have a new section 6003 that's under advisory capacity that clearly identifies the council as an independent authority and, and clearly says it and then gives these responsibilities and says that it will get administrative support without interfering with the core functions. And I, then have section uh, the section there that says except as otherwise provided and not with and B A and B. So you're just removing C and putting it in its own separate thing, but you're not removing it from the it. list above. I would support that. I think that's good. I think that's a good start, Senator Colmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I agree. If you took what's now uh, numbered as six zero zero three, and took the exact same language from line 17 through, well, through number yeah. two, line two on the next page, it made that its own separate 6,003, yeah. and then took what is now A and B and renumbered those to be 6,004, I think you've accomplished what you want to do. That's that's exactly what I would have done, and, and then just made the beginning statement a little stronger. So you said it much better than I did. Thank you. Not sure I did, but you're welcome. All right. So um, are there other, there were there other issues here where there was, um, Cameron, there were a couple other places where there were um, some um, not, not agreement. Yes. Let me. Would you bring us to those? While she's looking for those, Gail has her hand up. I'm not sure. Oh, Gail, I'm sorry. Hi, Chair White. The HGO is expecting you in about five minutes. Oh, I think, okay. I think Amron is going to that same meeting as well. I think mine's been no. pushed to about 3.30. I think oh, Tucker okay. is going to the one I'm going to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the there was the section that we've discussed, the 6003 subsection C, where I had the placeholder, which we've just discussed. Mm -hmm. Then there was uh, this was this is transition. This is the transition section. Um, I believe it's section three of the bill, which is down a ways. Oh, I think it's on page 13. Is that it? Provisions for the transition? Yes. Yes. And the concern about, uh, the concern was about okay. subsections A, B, and D. Um, that all of the, the criminal justice's financial assets and liabilities, as well as its positions, equipment, supplies, inventory, should remain the Justice Council's. And the rules should remain council rules. And the Justice Council would retain its rulemaking authority.
Hope we've lost our chair, Senator Fiona. She's gone. She's gone to House General. Oh, I thought she. I didn't know she had actually already left. Um, she has left. Well, those the words. I mean, I guess I would ask people to comment on why. I mean, I see why there could be disagreement there because it certainly appears as if the council is going to be giving over everything, its appropriations and equipment supplies, et cetera, to the agency of public safety. Is that related all to them being independent or not? I mean, what would be the result of doing that? The wording that's in the bill is came from who, yeah, Amran? Uh, that came from the Department of Public Safety. Right. It's the language that's used for all of the, the transfers of the Department of Public Safety into the agency, um, the E911 board, Right. the enforcement officers, all of those, it's the same language for all of those transfers. So the question is whether it's appropriate to have that same language with the council as with the other entities. Commissioner Sherling, I presume you would speak in favor of that. Uh, thanks, Senator. The, the, the original um, goal here was to infuse more resources into the operations of the academy by sharing resources. Obviously the Department of Public Safety has you know, vast resources above and beyond um, the small operations of the police academy. Um, so that was the original intent. Um, the, I'm not clear um, from my discussions with folks uh, to what extent the, the council actually has any assets I think many That's of the assets point. are um, uh, like facilities are, are BGSs. Um, I, I don't know what else there is. Uh, so I, I'm not sure how this, I, I, I just don't fully understand how th this is perceived as being um, problematic. At the same time, I, there's, no, there's no significant advantage to, to the agency or the department to absorb assets and liabilities of someone else. So it doesn't make that much difference. Um, but again, the, the goal was to try to be helpful, um, right. by, uh, um, providing more resources. Their Could you tell me, I'm sorry, Senator Clarkson? Their chief asset seems to be Bill Sorrell. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and the staff. Um, it, See, it, it says though, B, it says all authorized positions. Yeah. I wonder what that means. All, does Bill go to work for this agency now? All authorized positions and B. Um, I, I believe that is just standard language around um, state government consolidations. So, uh, you know, in the in the position headcount that you see when we present budgets, you'd see the dozen or so academy employees um, within the agency construct. Um, but that this does beg the question if, if we're gonna set keep it as an independent and we're gonna set up the section that identif clarifies it as an independent council, then wouldn't the only uh, letter here that really applies is number C, is C which is the, well, the, the, the CJC mm -hmm. will have the administrative technical and legal assistance of the agency of public safety. It keeps its rulemaking authority it keeps its assets and liabilities and it it keeps its staff yes i mean doesn't it only share it, are you going to share hr i mean are everybody's paychecks going to come from the agency is that what this is trying to clarify or uh yes i'm i'm looking for a good uh um within the the agency of public say of of, uh, of the of, excuse me of commerce, for example, we have a couple of different constructs where there's an independent council that has full authority over spending and programmatic delivery, but there are employees of the agency of commerce that are they exist. Fred Kenny, for example, when he was with commerce, existed uh, as a commerce employee, but reported to the Vermont Economic Progress Council in his entirety. That's kind of what we anticipated uh, with that kind of relationship we were trying to create um, relative to the executive director here is exactly what you see with Pepsi. Got it. So uh, uh, administ full administrative umbrella of pay, benefits, 
but reporting and independent independent reporting, independent authority. That just probably needs to be clearly outlined. It would be interesting to see what the, what the language is around the the BEPSI incorporation into ACCD. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's this nuanced. We are in the weeds here, um, <laughs> trying to find uh, our our path. I think it'd be interesting to see. I'm sorry, do you have your hand up? I just wanted to. Um, the question of what our assets are came up and it would be um, our fleet vehicles, furniture and other related training equipment. The one thing that just, I mean, I, that makes sense, but the authorized positions is the nuance that is a little, seems a little um, not complicated, but questionable. But I hear what you're saying, Mr. Sher Commissioner Sherling, that um, it's, relate to the Vepsi example was a good example. But I, I guess what I would do is I would just, in my own mind, leave a question mark here until we see the language that makes it clear that it's a separate entity, that the council's a separate entity. And that having seen that later on, we might decide that this is okay. We might decide that we wanna revisit the conversation a little bit about turning over all the, the positions to the council, to the agency of public safety. But for now, Emran, are there other? Is there another section that we should be looking at? And, and may I say, Senator, sure. I, I, I'm not sure about the legal assistance uh, piece. We, we, the new position that thus far has made it in the budget in the House, and we're hoping that Senate appropriations goes along with it. Uh, two new positions. One of them is legal. Uh, position and uh, uh, I, I'm I, I'm just raising a bit of a red flag about uh, it, we could ask for legal assistance, but um, you may not need it. May not need. Well, it. You also may want your own legal advisors. Yeah. Well, that's what I that's what I'm trying to yeah. say, uh, yeah. and. Uh, <clears throat> So Our depending, massive, on, depending uh, on what you're dealing with, I mean, you may not want to have it be public safety agency's legal authority. Yes, that's uh, that's what I'm suggesting. Our yeah. massive legal team of two would not balk at uh, not having additional responsibilities. Yeah, Cindy, I, I, you look like you have a comment there, Cindy. I don't know if you had your hand up. Just agreeing. With which? <laughs> with Chair Sorrell. All right. So then I, that's another reason to leave this with a question mark until we get more clear about how the independence will be stated. But I think the legal, the legal assistance and the authorized positions are two things we might just want to revisit. Where do we go from here, Amron? Down to section six on page 15. This is the section about transition generally. There was a concern about the phrase that the agency secretary may take any action necessary to enable the organizational modernization and consolidation of state law enforcement divisions and resources. So this would give the secretary of public safety the ability to basically do things, make changes that are made in the name of modernization, but, but have the power to do that without necessarily having to have it be approved by the council or anyone else. I would, I would observe, that Senator, that I, I think if you're going to move the, the Criminal Justice Council and the Academy to its own section, you can probably obviate the impact of this uh, piece by doing that. Yeah, I would think so. Yep. Are there, is that it? Is there, are there other, other sections, Armin? So are there particular questions or those are the, those are the sections that we need to revisit that where there was disagreement, I guess I'd call it a controversy to lack of agreement. Lack of agreement. Right. So far we're getting there. But I wonder whether there's other comments or questions around any of these sections or about the, where we are in general in terms of where we stand with the bill. No. Uh, 
And Amarin, you'd be able to take what you have to come up with something around the uh, independence issue? Yes, for the, yes. Commissioner Sherling, are you okay with this so far? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, I, I just observe that I, I think we're we're largely aligned, um, if not entirely aligned, with uh, where Chair Sorrell would want, wants to go um, in terms of the independence. Uh, it's just threading the needle um, to to make it all make sense and, and and not water it down so far that there's just no benefit to having um, the operations of the academy attached to the agency. Sure. Bill Sorrell, you okay with this right now? Yes, thank, uh, thanks to the committee uh, for this today. Any other comments? I don't know if Mark Anderson's here, other folks who haven't spoken have any ideas or any comments? Uh, thank you, Senator. I, I think that I'm pretty comfortable with everyone's comments so far. John, you're comfortable? I can't uh, find the raise hand uh, feature, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I uh, in listening to, uh, and maybe perhaps I should just say for the record, John Federico, Department of Motor Vehicles, and uh, the VSEA rep uh, to the uh, Vermont Criminal Justice Council. Um, I, I think I agree that there's, uh, there's a threading the needle piece of this. Um, the important piece, which from my perspective is just to make sure that the executive director of the uh, of the academy just has to remain not beholden to two different groups so i it's my belief that if the, the executive director of the academy has to be beholden just to the council if that's the way you intend it and and the language just says to you have to just assure yourselves that the language is such that they're not beholden to two different to two different people. Therefore, the direct reports, I think, to the executive director would therefore be beholden to two different groups. And they'd be potentially in certain circumstances rowing in different directions. And there's a number of imaginary scenarios that we can all come up with, but um, that's the most important piece for me is that the language um, protects the, 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 um, the direction that the executive director has to, to row. And if that's to maintain um, the direction of the council without without having to be beholden to anybody else, I think that's the important piece for me, from my perspective. That was well said, I appreciate that. Tony Fakis, focus. Um, Tony Fakis, Director of Enforcement and Safety, Vermont Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, yeah, John, that was a really important, uh, I think, way to encapsulate it and I'm, uh, fine with exactly where this seems to be headed um, with, in terms of the academy and then the, or the, the training count criminal justice council excuse me and uh and on again we're supportive of this this piece of legislation to uh create this agency and you're okay with the, you you move, the move towards more independent statement is okay with you uh, yeah i think it accomplishes um you provide us crafted appropriately What's so important is the public has to really believe and trust what we're doing at the highest level. And, and I think it will all flow from there. Um, again, trust and legitimacy, as we know, is, is just the cornerstone of law enforcement. And um, if, the, if anybody, any group, entity feels disenfranchised from that or feels that the, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just change can't happen or accountability can't occur in an appropriate way, then um, it's doomed to fail. Sure. I can't see everybody who's here, so I'm, I don't know if anybody else needs to speak or make a comment before we adjourn. I, I've, I've asked everybody that I see. John, did you have your hand up? I just wanted to, uh, I didn't, um, of course, know what, what all the the uh, chair wanted to cover in this in this um, in this particular hearing, and one of the reasons, of course, that um, um, that I came was in case there was a, the opportunity or the need to speak on the Department of Law Enforcement piece of of the bill. Um, but if that wasn't for today, then I will certainly uh, hold and come back at another time. 
Well, we're certainly going to come back to this. I don't know when. It's up to the chair as to when we schedule this next week or the week after. But we are committed to moving it out one way or another in time to get it crossed over to the other chamber. So, so I think what we would do is, is task Amarin with coming up with some language around the independence issue. And then we'll re come together and revisit the whole the whole bill again, and it'll give us better direction as to how we handle those other pieces that we left that we left hanging around the movement of the personnel and the legal assistance. Those issues we'll deal with those next time. We'll have closer to consensus on that. Anthony, so our, our chair has returned, and um, I'm just curious because it's only three fifteen. I mean, are we? I assumed we were going to go to other sections of the bill also, or other sections of I well, just assumed at three thirty, we're supposed to talk with people about ARPA funds. Oh, right. Drew, Drew Hazelton, Gwen Zakoff, Peter Gregory. Got it. Right. So we have a, we have a change of topics at in three thirty. So I was going to suggest that we take a little stretch between now and three thirty. Right. If that's okay, and then right. come back and sort of finish. So we'll be finished with what we're talking about now. We come back from a little stretch. We'll be able to sit down and talk about the ARPA funds. Come. Anthony, work for Senator Polina, you are much more humane than I am. He is, and we're appreciative. <laughs> so, I, I, I think I did tell, um, uh, relay a message to John Federico that um, if we had time today, we would we would look at that. But I think that it took us longer with the the um, independence language than than had anticipated. So I'm going to try to put this on the schedule for next Tuesday. Okay. And do you think, Amarin, that by Tuesday we might have a bill? I mean, a, have an assigned number and can go from there? I would need to check. Okay, but we can use your draft anyway and you can change, yes. you can be changing language in it. Yes. Okay, okay. All right. So a bit of do to those of you who are here to talk about the agency of public safety. Thank you very much. Next Tuesday, if possible. Great. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Senator Plain, that was very nice of you to give a break. <laughs> I know what so it's like. Will I take us offline then and we reconvene after a break? I believe yeah, so. Yes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Isn't that? Wouldn't that be about three thirty? Sure. Well, oh, yeah. It's, it'll be three. Like 12, it's like tw thirteen minutes.